Hello again. Welcome to the practical part of the Quadrant Essentials course on Hybrid Search. At this point, we should all know the differences between sparse and dense vectors and how to use the Universal Query API to build a system that uses more than just one search method. Let's get straight to the notebook. Obviously, we need the dependencies to be installed. Uh, and in our case, uh, it will be just Quadrant with fast embed extra, so we don't need any other libraries to create the embeddings. Once they are installed, we can connect to a running Quadrant Cloud instance. If you don't have a Quadrant server running yet, please launch it either locally or just use the free tire of Quadrant Cloud. Uh, the API key here is loaded from Google Colab Secrets, uh, which work almost like environmental variables. Now, when we are all done with the prerequisites, uh, we can create a collection. One thing you may find surprising is that we no longer have just a single vector uh, configured, uh, but there are dense and sparse named vectors created in a single collection. If you want to use hybrid search, uh, then you have to do it on a single collection, so you always have the same points to search over. Our collection is called hybrid search demo and should already be created. I hope you are not getting hungry, because I will continue to use cheese-related examples we have a rather tiny data set of just 10 sentences, each describing a different type of cheese or a dish that uses it. And since there isn't much data to be stored in Quadrant's collection, we don't need to worry much about batching or retrying, but in reality, uh, you should consider that. In our case, a single absurd call uh, is just fine, and we expect the upload not to take much time. Uh, we use a very small sentence transformer, all mini LM L6v2, uh, for the dense embeddings, and fast embed implementation of BM25 um, for sparse vectors. Both should excel in different cases, so it's better to have them both if you want to cover queries coming from different ends of the spectrum. Okay, it's done. Validating the quality of the outputs is something we will focus on just now. Uh, let's create a helper method that will run dense search for a given query and return the top three matches. A similar helper function will do the same thing but for the sparse vector search. Now it should be a bit easier to run tests on different queries. Obviously, the quality of the output should be defined by some sort of golden data set, but here we'll just do some abling. We have just four queries, so let's have a look at the outputs of each of the individual methods. Uh, dense and sparse search may produce different sets of results, or the same results but in a different order. Sometimes the ranking will match, but that's not a rule. Uh, and one interesting difference is that dense search will always return the expected number of results, assuming you have that many points in a collection, because two data points are always somewhat similar. The similarity might be pretty low, but still. And that doesn't happen with sparse vectors. Here, if we have a vocabulary mismatch, then we can see fewer results than uh, we would expect to have. And in the worst case, vector search based on sparse embeddings uh, can return no results. So, depending on the method, different responses to the same query might be generated. Now, we can combine them both and see uh, what happens. Another helper method will use the prefetch mechanism of the Universal Query API to retrieve the top three results 
uh, from both sparse and dense. Then we will run reciprocal rank fusion to combine these intermediate outputs. Uh, what does it look like for all the queries we have? Let's have a look. Um, now, if you check the outputs of the previous attempts we had, you will see that we have results coming from both methods here, which is expected. Um, obviously, if both methods return the same ranking, then RRF won't change it either, uh, which is clear, hopefully. And whenever sparse uh, search returns fewer or no results, uh, then the dense search takes preference over it. So, did reciprocal rank fusion improve the search quality here? We don't know it. Uh, proper evaluation requires building a reference ground truth data set that defines the expected outputs uh, for each of the queries we have. And we don't have it here, unfortunately. Moreover, search is subjective and the best results strongly depend on the user's unknown intentions. However, if you treat it seriously, search quality might and should be measured. Um, we haven't covered that in the previous lesson, but uh, reciprocal rank fusion is not the only fusion algorithm available in Quadrant. As for now, uh, there is also distributed based score fusion, which normalizes the scores of the points in each query and sums the scores of the same point across different queries. Let's check how the results will look like when we use it. Another helper function uh, will perform the same process like before, uh, but with a different fusion method. And here are the results. Uh, maybe you can't tell it right now, but the ranking returned in DBSF uh, is identical to the one returned by reciprocal rank fusion uh, for all the queries. Mm, that's not a rule, otherwise we would have a single method, obviously. That just happened in our oversimplified example. In practice, you should evaluate both fusion algorithms to see which one works better in your specific use case. So, to sum it up, we've just built a hybrid search pipeline in a single API call. Practically, the Universal Query API gives you unlimited possibilities to build multi-stage retrieval pipelines to improve the relevancy of your search even further. Fusion is not the only way to combine results coming from incompatible methods, but it's a low-hanging fruit to improve the user satisfaction if you have a single method search engine that struggles with some of the queries. Reranking, because that's what we are specifically speaking about, may need some more advanced methods, even specialized neural models, but that's the way to go if you care about search quality.